Thank you, Andy. We're here in the vendors area here at the uh, Adobe Photoshop seminar, and as you can see, we're at the Wacom table where they have some of the uh, yeah. the tablets that you can use for graphics. And uh, you know, personally, as strange as it's going to sound, I actually like to use them in place of a mouse or a touchpad because there are many, many more options with the pens and even the uh, the uh, controls that are actually on the tablets themselves right there. Steve, give us an idea of what the Cintiq from Wacom can do. Oh, no. Okay, what we're looking at here, this is called the Cintiq 20, and this is Wacom's newest family of products called the Cintiq. There is a 12 inch, a 20 inch, and a 21 inch. This is the wide format version. It has a programmable express keys on the face part of it. On the back side, you also have this touch strip built right in. And that can be programmed to either zooming in and out or changing brush size on the fly. And uh, an example of that would be if I choose a nice pressure sensitive brush and I go ahead and apply pressure sensitivity for opacity and also set up pressure for size, then we're going to have this nice line that transitions from thin to thick and light to dark. Then if I wanted to change the size of that brush, I can go ahead and stroke and now I've got a larger brush I'm working with. Stroke it back down, kind of get a medium-sized brush. Also, the rear end of the pen can act as an eraser. And that eraser can be crafted just as you would with any other brush. You can modify the size of the eraser. You can go ahead and go up and give it a soft edge so that you're erasing softly. And so it's a very nice editing tool. It can be used either for line art, for graphics on the computer, or it can be used for photo editing. So here's an image of a model wearing a pair of Oakley sunglasses. And what I'm gonna do is change this a little bit so that we can put more focus on the sunglasses themselves. First thing I'll do is select an adjustment layer of hue and saturation. Then I'll desaturate, and now we've got a grayscale over the top of the color. I'm gonna grab a brush, I'm gonna paint with black, but first, I wanna take a look at the nature of this brush. So in Photoshop CS3, we'll look at this brush dialog box. I'm gonna turn off shape and size. I'm gonna leave on opacity as pressure, and so now we can go ahead and hop in here and do a little bit of this work. With a very light touch, I can bring in just a whisper of that original color that's sitting underneath. Just a little bit of that effect. Because it's a pressure sensitive tool, both opacity and flow are set at 100%. We're working in a mode of normal. And as I press harder, more of that color set can come through. So I can get a full saturation value as I brush through here. And let's imagine that I get over enthusiastic here and I kind of go out of bounds. Flip over the pen, go ahead and remove that effect with the rear end of the pen, and continue on over here to the logo. So now we take a look at the difference. Here's the full shot. Here's the shot with the focus on the sunglasses. So that gives it more pop. Nice. When you think about working with a Cintiq, you can either use this as your primary workspace, your main monitor. This is a, a hardened glass surface. It has a uh, texture uh, feature built into the surface also has a non-glare treatment. This is currently set up to this nice little G4 laptop. Now if I wanted to, I've already got this set up as an extended monitor mode. The Cintiq 20 has a touch button where at the touch of a button I'm able to move and drag and drop things in between the two monitors. So that feature through this button is called display toggle. And that's pretty handy. Lets you move a lot of your stuff off, keep focus in your main workspace, works out really sweet. So now let's go back in and actually do some work on the photo. This time around, let's go in and look at the flag. We're gonna make a duplicate layer so we don't damage the original image. We're gonna hop up here and get the cloning stamp. Go over to the fireman with the option. Yeah, with the option key, I'm gonna grab the, uh, the nose of that fireman. We'll come back over to the flag. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit closer. And now with a soft brush, I'm gonna start bringing that image back in. 
Just a whisper of it. Now to see where my location is, let me zoom back out a little bit. Okay, and I'm going to continue with this, bringing that fireman in. Increase the brush size a little. Keep working it bit by bit. And then press harder just in the center. And then go ahead and uh, we'll see how we're doing here with the full image. And there we go. So now we've got a nice piece where we've combined the two pieces together. And again, you notice that a lot of the work that I was doing was related to the programmable buttons that are built into the 20, the touch strips that are built into the back side of it, and just this ability to make use of a pin as a very precise selection tool and also as a tool with programmable buttons built in. Thanks a lot, Slick. I really want to get my hands on one of those. But you know what? If you're a Photoshop professional and you you know you want to create pictures that are a little quicker, uh, you don't have the time to go and create all these wonderful mask effects, you can actually go to graphicauthority.com because they have a whole bunch of software, DVDs, clips, everything for creating the great look. Matter of fact, take a look at the table here. Uh, they actually have all types of packages available, whether you're a wedding photographer or you're a photographer for an ad agency. Uh, if you want to create some cool things, whether it be for clothing, for cars, or you want to create some nice stuff for the book and card series, Little Kids, you can do all these and integrate your photos right into these uh, pre-made type of templates. And it makes it really easy for you to get a real professional look. And Graphic Authority has a website. It's graphicauthority.com. Guys, how long have you guys been around? Graphic Authority has been around since 1994. We've been doing uh, specializing, I guess you could say, in uh, custom-made templates as well as different graphics for Photoshop, including edges, brushes, backgrounds, vectors, and different templates for about the last five years. Um, our current product line includes eight different products that is specially designed for everything from a graphic designer who does web page, web page designs and um, advertisement to perhaps the photographer who's putting together mostly albums such as wedding albums or senior books or who's going to be putting together maybe announcement cards. So our products are really versatile. You can work with a preset template that you drag and drop your images into or you can also work with the different elements such as the brushes, the edges and the backgrounds by themselves and then compose your own composite templates as well. So, uh, where do you suppose Carol is? I'm a full-fledged member of the NAPP! <laughs>